But today, as I mentioned, we are starting a new series, something I am calling the Mad Lad Chess Academy, because you know your boy's a mad lad. And it's evident through multiple streams that I've done in the past. You know, I do chess streams here every Friday. But a lot of people come through, they're just like, oh man, I wish I knew more about chess, or like I only know the very basics, or I only learned like what I know from chess from the Queen's Gambit, or I don't even know how to play chess. And so after about you know a couple weeks couple months of hearing that the thought finally dawned on me because remember i'm a guy and sometimes subtleties they come hard to us guys so ask any girl that's had a crush on a guy but the guy just didn't listen we uh we sometimes have trouble with subtleties uh it doesn't help that i have asperger's either but anyway um here we are i'm going to be teaching you guys chess week after week we're going to go through this we're going to start from the very very basics literally today we're going to talk about how the pieces move we're finally going to earn out unearth how does the knight move because that seems to be a very pertinent question that people ask all the time shout out to andrea botez who once asked it to magnus carlson the absolute mad lad that she was at a tournament and he actually he uh, that's a great clip i should show that later but yeah, so people have trouble sometimes with how does knight move or how does horse move. And so today we're going to be learning how the horsey moves. We live, baby! Just say he moves in L's. Yeah, that's the, basically how it works. So we're going to be going through the very basics and then we're going to continue to develop and develop and develop, pun intended. Developing is a thing in chess. That's a term that we use to say moving your pieces out. So we're going to continue to develop and build on top of one another. And if you're watching this on YouTube or this is your first time stopping by my Twitch stream ever, how's it going? My name is A is for Drew. I do a lot of things. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Mechanics GG. Uh, so my day job, I get to write code and hang out with Twitch streamers, but also I get to stream myself so that I can test out our platform and do all sorts of stuff and hang out with the amazing Mechanics GG community. But beyond that, by far, one of the things that I love to do in my free time, what little I have of it, is play competitive chess. And I also work part time as a chess coach at my local chess club, and I've been playing chess for well over 20 years now, ever since my mom used to play with me around the the kitchen table and she would always get me in scholars mate and it took me forever to finally learn how to deflect that so <laughs> born was my hatred of the scholars mate we'll learn more about that at a later lesson but i've been playing chess for well over 20 years i've been playing competitively now for close to a year and i'm very close to 1000 uscf rating i am a thousand on chess.com and i have taught a lot of my friends and at this point hundreds of kids how to play the game of chess and my hope is that at least two of them remember how the game is actually played because it's one thing to teach but it's another thing to teach with comprehension hey Andrew, what's up joshua good to see you by the way scholars mate we'll talk about scholars mate at a different time that's the four move checkmate you might know it as the four move checkmate so without further ado let's jump right over and for those of you that are watching on youtube after the fact just know that i am doing this on Twitch, so I might respond to chat every once in a while, and so that is where we're at. I'm wondering which one is better. Okay, this one's better. So, here we are on chess.com, a really popular chess website. You've probably heard about it before. Uh, if you don't, then literally typing chess.com. This domain name, by the way, chess.com, they got this, like, back in the 90s. This, like, just a single word or single noun.com, those domain names are like really, really valuable. So the fact that it's literally chess.com, that's pretty, pretty impressive. So with that in mind, chess.com is one of the most well-known chess sites out there. They host a lot of different things. They support the eSport of chess, if you can call it an eSport. There's a lot of chess streamers that they support as well. Another chess website you might look into is Lee Chess. What I like about Lee Chess is that you can do puzzles and all sorts of other stuff for free. We'll talk about the value of puzzles at a different lesson, but Lee Chess is all free. Chess.com, you have to pay for some things, but to play online on Chess.com and to play some of the puzzles is totally free. And then there's some other chess sites out there as well, like Chessable and then Play Magnus, which is, was just acquired by Chess.com actually. So Chess.com is really the main one and I play on Chess.com. So we'll be doing our thing. Yep. Uh, Joshua, I will message you about that. I have a commitment, so I don't know if I'll be able to make it, but um, I'll message the group and let everybody know. So, anyhow, let's talk about the five, six or so pieces. There's six pieces that are like what you're going to interact with a lot, and that, well, there's six pieces. I, I don't know why I said like five. I should just learn how to count. There's six pieces here. Anyway, so. The pieces on the chessboard, and again, this might be reviewed for some of you guys in the 
in the chat, but for those of you that are very, very new to chess, this will be completely from base. So there are six main pieces in chess. There is the pawn, the bishop, also known as the bishy wishy, the knight, also known as the haunts, also known as the horse. You have the rookie wookie, also called the rook. Well, it, the, it's called the rook. That's the official name for it, but we call it the rookie wookie or the castle sometimes you can call it that too you'll hear people say castle or that sort of thing you have the queen which is the most powerful piece she can move in the most directions we'll talk about that in a second and then you have the king who is worth the game basically the whole goal of chess is that you want to capture the enemy's king and the way that you do that we'll talk about in just a second but let's go through these and talk about how each of them moves so first things first we have the pawn the pawn moves forward so he can move forward one space, except for on his first turn. Let me go back. Wait, okay, hold on. We've got to rebuild, this is so scuffed. You can tell this is the first lesson that I'm doing. Constant improvement, that's what we're working on. I'm still learning like the interface for chess.com. You think I would have done a dry run of this beforehand, but I digress. Anyway, so the pawn moves forward. He can move forward one space, except on his first turn, where he can move two spaces. So only on his first turn can the pawn move two pieces, two spaces. Otherwise, he moves one space. So that's the pawn. The pawn captures diagonally. Really, it's one of only, it's the only piece that doesn't capture in the same way that it moves. All the other pieces will capture the square that they land on when they move, but the pawn attacks diagonally. So it is the one exception. The pawn moves forward, but captures diagonally. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Secondly, we have the Bishy Wishy, and the Bishy Wishy is all about angles. The bishop moves on a diagonal. So you'll notice this is a dark square bishop, and so he can move to any one of these squares along the diagonal. So he can move over here, he can move over here, he can move here and then to here, and just all over the place. So we like to say, or you may have heard me say in past like Drew reviews and stuff like that, that the bishop is like a 5k runner. He's one of those people that enjoys running. There are people like that. I don't understand them, but the bishop likes to run around. And so he likes to run 5k's and he can get across the board really, really quick because he enjoys running and he runs a lot. So that is the bishop. We'll put him back for now. The knight we will come back to in just a second because his movements are a little bit more tricky. And so we will go then to the rook. The rook can move up and down like an elevator or left to right, kind of like a knot elevator or like a horizontal elevator. So the rook can move as many places as it wants up and down or left and right. So that's the rook. He can glide all the way up and down. And you may be asking yourself, well, Drew, how is it that a castle, a living, breathing cat. Well, a castle isn't living and breathing. What am I saying? I, I meant to say living and breathing to like add to the largeness or like the magnanimous, the magnificence of this. But the castle is basically a building. And you may be asking to yourself, well, how does a building move? I don't know. I don't make the rules. I just work here. So maybe when chess was invented, castles could like move around Howl's moving castle style. But yeah, in the game of chess, the castles move. It's pretty, pretty cool. So with that in mind, let's talk about the queen. Now the queen is the most valuable piece because it can do the most on the board. The queen is basically what happens if you took the rook and the bishop and smacked them together. So the queen can move all up and down left and right as far as she wants to as long as there's no piece and then she can also move diagonally as far as she wants to as long as there's another piece if there's another piece in her way she can just go and capture it so the queen is basically the knight plus the rook or sorry the bishop plus the rook i was looking at the knight because that's where we're going next so to the question andrea botez and to all of you that are wondering out there how does the knight move that's a great question the knight moves in an l shape so the knight can move up two squares and over to the left or right one square, or it can move two squares to the left or the right and then up or down. So the knight kind of paints kind of like a circle around himself, but all you have to remember is jump into the left or jump into the right. Pretend there's like a fence right here. So this square is a fence, so you jump over the fence and then you go to the left or the right. Or there's a fence right here, you jump over the fence and then you go left or you go right. 
And then the knight will actually change colors. You'll notice this is a light squared knight, but it will land on a dark square. So all the moves that the knight can make are right here. So hopefully that was pretty concise. The knight is really, really cool. It's one of my favorite pieces to play with. It's kind of like the 360 no scoper of the chess world because you can hit a lot of really cool what we call tactics with these. Yo, what's up, Chili? We're just going over basic movement. Love to see it. I will catch up on chat in just a second. But the it's basically the 360 no scope. And if you don't believe me that you can hit a 360 no scope in the game of chess or basically the equivalent, it's like a really hype move. Knight Rider, what's up, Kays? Good to see you. Yeah, the knight. So the knight can maneuver and jump around and get into all sorts of positions where you can hit some really mean tactics, hit some really cool 360 no scopes. And I can show you games where I hit stuff like that. But we will talk about those 360 no scopes or the tactics that you can do with knights in another video or another lesson. So just to recap, the pawn can move two squares forward on its first turn. Otherwise, it moves one square up and then it captures diagonally. The Bishy Wishy goes as far as he can in any one direction along his diagonals. So he's like the 5k runner that runs around. And then if there's a piece, let's say there's like a knight right here, then the bishop can only go as far as that and then capture. So the bishop captures along his path, same with knights. So if there's a knight here, the knight, wherever it lands, if there's a piece there, it can capture. And then the queen is the smashing or the love child of a whoop. I didn't want to do that, is the love child of a rook and a bishop. So if you took this one, hey, I really got to get used to the chess.com UI. Okay, turn that off. So the queen is basically the equivalent of the rook and the bishop put together. So she can move along diagonals and that sort of thing. And let's say there's a piece like right here. She can only go as what? I didn't mean to write that. All right, turn that off. And so she can go as far as this diagonal and then she can capture it. So the queen can capture any piece that she lands on. And then the rook goes up and down, left and right, like an elevator or a not elevator, like a horizontal elevator. So that is basic piece movement. I will now turn to the chat to see if there are any questions. Um, I was out buying new headphones beyond a few. Okay, our boy Chili is going to be joining us as well. Chili is my chess coach. So I'm the one teaching you guys, and Chili is the one that coaches me. So he is the coach's coach, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a mega pawn in a castle. There you go. I aspire to be a great chess player. My granddad taught me how to play chess and always used to let me beat him. I'm older now, but he's getting old, and I think the time is coming soon. He doesn't have the energy to play, so I'll never truly know how easy he went on me. And he and that drives me. That's amazing. My, uh, my mom passed away in 2015, and so I have resolved to myself to become a chess master so that I can make her proud because she's the one who taught me how to play chess so night is cool but it doesn't need uh night is cool because it doesn't need light of sight absolutely that's a good point there case also welcome in let's get some love for case first time chatter we love to see it so with that in mind let's apply what we've learned so we know how the pieces move so let's take a look at how a chessboard is set up so at the beginning of the game you get this this is called the starting position and as you can see, we have a row of eight pawns right here. We have rooks, knights, bishops, and king. And then on the queen side, so the side of the board where the queen rests, you have also a knight, a rook, and a bishop. So if you can remember K, B, N, R, those are the letters that correspond to the pieces, you can set up a chess board. So just remember K, B, N, R. Knight, king, bishop, knight, rook. You may be like, well, Drew, why does the knight have shouldn't be the knight be a k instead of the k the king well again i don't make the rules i just work here knight starts with a kn and so since k was already taken by the king the knight is an n so what's up drew what's up buddha good to see you sir um we're just going over some basic stuff so let's apply what we've learned so far now in the game of chess white player moves first so in this case we will play e4 which is one of my favorite openings in the whole wide world. So when I say E4, what I'm talking about is each of the rows or each of the sort of pillars, we call them columns, or sorry, yes, columns. We call it, I get. The, I always get these mixed up. So each of the columns of the chessboard corresponds to a number. So this is the A column, this is the B column, the C column, D column, and so on. And each of the rows has a number that corresponds to it. So in chess, when we're talking about making a move, we state the pawn move to the E column and then the fourth row. So that is E4, the square that corresponds to E4. So if you ever see me saying stuff like that, that just line up the, the board and figure out where the, the column is and then the number, and that's where the piece will correspond to. 
Also, these are coordinated to white side of the position, so the A1 square will always be the left, the leftmost rook of the white side. And if you ever wonder how to set up a chessboard, always remember that your white square is, or the lower right square should always be white. So we say white on the right when you're setting up. Some people will like rotate their board 90 degrees and they'll have a purple square or a dark square here, but just remember it's always a light square in the lower right. So, sorry to hear about your mod, Drew. No, it's all good, dude. I, um, I appreciate the sympathy. And uh, she was a great woman. I think she would have liked you guys. But um, yeah, rest in peace, Ndidi. And so she's up there playing chess with uh, the angels now. Anyway, so, and Hex, I'm sorry to hear about your grandpa. And I know it's hard when you have, uh, you know, they're kind of on, uh, well, you know the time is coming soon. So let's get back to the lesson, though. Let's bring the vibes back up. Not that, you know, we don't want to talk about serious topics here because this is a safe place, but let's bring it back. Let's get the energy back here. So. The pawn, we remember that it moves two squares on its first turn, so we just bust our pawn out right into the middle and we play e4, and then our opponent plays the move d5. And so you'll notice, if you remember, that the queen, or I'm sorry, the, the pawn, I'm thinking ahead here, the pawn captures diagonally. So this pawn being out here, we can take that. And then the queen, remember, she can move up and down, left and right, and along the diagonal, so the queen has vision on this pawn. So let's take our queen, and she can capture right here. So we're off to an intro. This is what we call the Scandinavian defense. We'll talk about opening theory way later, but this is something that I see a lot in my own games. So with that in mind, what do you guys think about a move? What move are we thinking? Can we bring our bishop out? Can we bring our knight out? What, uh, what, what kind of candidate moves are we thinking about here? Okay, you all set up. If you want to disc up, just start the call. Alrighty. I learned how to play chess as a kid, but don't remember who taught me. Definitely not my parents. It's all right. As long as somebody taught you, as long as you're playing, that's the important part. So everybody has this. I think everybody, if you don't have a story about how you learn chess, you probably have a story about like some of the best chess games you've ever played. So, all right, let's get Chile in here. So we'll start this out. So, do you want to tell the fine people at home what you're all about and who you are and how we know each other and why you're so stinking awesome and so stinking handsome and so stinking good at chess? I wouldn't go as far as to say all that about me. Uh, I'll be a bit <laughs> humble and say <laughs> yes. I'll leave that to you. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so basically, I am Drew's chess coach and we've been taking lessons for a while now. We've met through his channel and he was like, oh, I give lessons. Oh, I want lessons. And then we started doing lessons together. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Drew's come re really come a long way. I think you started at 700, didn't you? It's something like that. There was a time where I tilted hard and I went down to 600. And so it's been a long trek back. Um, but yeah, I mean, Chile has helped me get tons and tons of rating. He got me into the competitive scene. So he got me playing competitively and really sharpening my moves. And so... He is the guy. He is the coach's coach. So he's going to be joining us for a number of these different lessons and adding his own insight and stuff like that. And we have such a vibe together. And so I think all in all, this is going to add a lot of spicy flavor. So Chili, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Very good. All right. So my question to you is, how does the knight move? Okay. So the knight moves typically in an L shape. Okay. Uh, when beginners start out, sometimes they don't look at L's. They, I'd say, like it goes one, two, and then one to the side, and then that's the L shape. So in the starting position, you see the knight on B1 and G1, so mm -hmm. right where they are right now. And when they have their first move, they only have two squares, right? Yep. So they can only go and make an L shape, for example, uh, to A3, C3, F3 and h3 there you go good stuff so uh, chili knows how the knight moves sorry i cut you off there no that's it that's fine yeah Continue. the lesson of the day is how the knight moves along with some other stuff that's our meme for the day so chili in this position and maybe chat can help us out too do you see a move that can threaten the queen that has like made her meandered her way out into the middle see a very nice move and i think it is knight to c3 knight to c3 very good so now this knight is attacking the queen and the queen is going to have to back up usually the queen will back up over here in the scandinavian and then we do some stuff but we won't go too too much into that um so here we are we're doing our thing we're bringing our pieces out let's say white plays a move like this we play a move like that and then we have to 
I'm just going through these pretty quickly just to show you guys how the pieces move. Now we have a special case. Do you guys see how there are two open squares between our king and our rook? So in chess, there is a, well, actually we're in check, but let's pretend we're not. Let's, uh, let's put this right here. Um, so in chess, we've talked about the basic moves. We've talked about how the pieces move. There's another special move that you guys can do that kind of, not violates the rules, but it's an exception. So if you have two squares in the middle of your king, or two open squares in the middle of your king, so there's nothing blocking your the path between your king and your rook, and you aren't in check, and neither your king nor your rook is moved, then you can execute what's called a castle. And a castle is where you bring your king over to the g1 square, and then the rook comes over to the f1 square. And so it's kind of like nuzzling your king. I like to give the analogy that it's like nuzzling your king into bed. He's all cozy. He's got his blankie and his headboard right here. And he's just getting ready for a, a night of goofy, ah, uh, like sleep. So the me, 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 that sort of thing. Um, explain the yeah, cut. Keep in mind that uh, whenever you castle, it's just one move. It's not like you're making. It's not like it takes two moves. You can make it in one move, but you move two pieces on that specific move if you castle. It is. And that's is the beauty cool. of it. It is. And it offers another big aspect called king safety, which is something we'll talk about a little bit later. So most games, 90 to 95% of games of chess will have a castle at some point. It's also worth noting that the same can be done on your queen side as well. So if there is no blockade between your king and your rook on your queen side, and neither your king or your rook has moved, and you are not in check, then you bring your king over to, oh, that the, my rook just captured my king. Cool. Um, you bring your king over to the c1 square, and now we have two kings on the board. Chess.com's classroom is all sorts of... Uh, let me... Get rid of this. How do I clear a space? Can I? Nope. I think he just plays a rook there. Oh, so plays a rook. Okay. Out. There we go. There you are. And then, but basically the rook will come over to the D1 square. So we'll put him right there. And so that is castling queen side. So you can do there's it on the... What's also, up? Uh, sorry to interrupt. There's also some rules about castling, right? Mm -hmm. And it's important to know because some many people ask me like, when can you castle? When can't you castle? And basically, you can castle if there's nothing blocking your king and the square it goes to. So if we go back to where the king's on e1, mm -hmm. and we want to castle on... or well, we call it castling short and long. Yep. Short is when we castle to, to g1, and long is when we castle to c1. Mm -hmm. Basically because it's a different dis distance, basically. Yeah, this distance and... is shorter than this distance. Yeah. So let's say we have a let's put the e knight on c3. Mm -hmm. E knight on c3 right here. Yeah, the queen on g3. Mm -hmm. G3. Let's push d4. D4. And just for example's sake, puts a bishop on c4 for black and on g5 as well. All right. So c4 and g5. There we go. So in this position, we can't castle either side because if we try and castle the, on the queen side, which would be castling long, our king would end up on c1, which is exactly where the bishop is hitting. And so mm -hmm. we, we can't castle into a check. Correct. Another rule is we can't castle across a check. Yes. So for the king to get to g1, he'd have to go from g1 to g1. But mm -hmm. since the bishop looks at f1, then the king is cut off. This is very much like the RKO, like you guys know Randy Orton or like the RKO meme where it's R RKO out of nowhere. So if this king tries to castle this bishop, like in an instant, basically the way that I visualize it, this isn't what happens in the game, but basically the bishop comes out and just RKOs the king on his way over. And so that's why you can't castle through a check. So castling through a check or castling, um, what was the term you used? Into a check. Into a check. Yeah, you can't castle into a check and you can't castle through a check. So if there's any piece that has vision on the squares in between, that's a no-go. That's a big X, my guy. Um, so that's kind of the rundown. So that's castling. We talked about castling. We've talked about how the pieces move. There's another special pawn move that we'll talk about in another lesson. But so far, you guys have learned a lot. 
I haven't really done my due diligence with asking questions. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Like I said, it's kind of a review here. Um, but we got to start somewhere and we've got to like go over the move, basic moves and how they work. So now you know how the knight moves. So if Andrea Botez ever asked you, how does knight move? You know. Um, and then we have, we learned about castling and moving our pieces, all that good stuff. And we'll continue to talk about, so there was a question in the chat talking, this makes you, I know what you're talking about. There you go. Oh uh, yeah, Hex, Hex knows. Hex knows about the baguette, the baguette pawn move. Um, one does not simply castle it to a check. Yeah. So we'll talk about pawns and baguettes probably next lesson. Um, and then there's also a question on cutlery moves for skewers, forks. Those are what we call tactics. We will be talking about tactics later. So I'll pass out. That's the one. Um, we'll be talking about I'll pass out later. Um, the baguette pound move. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, we'll just take a look at chat. We'll probably answer after the fact. But if you're watching on YouTube, thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. We do these Mad Lad Chess lessons every single Friday, starting at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And it's a great time to hang out with your boys, Drew and Chili. And we do all sorts of Mad Lad shenanigans together. We teach chess and we really enjoy it. And so we would love it if you guys could join us. And we're only going to continue to get better and better as time goes on. So thank you guys for being here for the first ever episode of mad lad chess academy we will see you guys next what's up sorry there's been a question in chat oh yeah, yeah why the squares play why the uh, case that's the preference of uh of the chess.com website you can change yeah. that up so like if you want to make it blue purple green yellow mm -hmm. you can do, do all that jazz in the yeah section. it could get it could get really scuffed too so let's try and make like the most like can we make like the most like cursed setup here let's see what we got overlay orange let's see here yeah it's it's all about your preference um orange okay so that looks kind of hazy and then maybe we do oh yeah yeah here we go this is peak this is peak right here uh, look at you just, i'm having an aneurysm just looking at this board okay so yeah neon but yeah you can change your preferences on chess.com i use the neo pieces eight puts oh that's kind of fun that i take it back that is terrible i don't e i can't even tell a pawn from a bishop this is like i have like a super duper gaming monitor like i pay for all the uh the frames but like yeah this is very scuffed can you believe that people used to play chess like this like there were chess video games back in the day that looked like this god bless all right let me go back to i was on neo oh wait neo wood all right this is I turning mean, into me play, like what's up bit, then you're probably if you play chess with the 8 bit you're probably rated 500 more on the the 8 bit one it's just yeah. so hard to see you probably got tons of videos <laughs> yeah. that you're missing out on Chess.com, if you're watching, 8-bit uh, tournament win. So we have to do a tournament, but with like GMs and everything, but they have to play on 8-bit, and they, they will struggle. Um, Lose. Let's... Where was I? All right. Purple, because you know mechanics purple. And how... The Neo would... I don't know. But yeah, Chess.com has put a lot of work into making these things as pleasing to look at as possible. There is an intern somewhere at Chess.com that had to spend their summer creating all these palettes so let's give <laughs> give them the recognition that they deserve um but yeah what other questions do we have i have a question drew you have a checkmate in one move and it's your turn next but the opponent offers en passant i mean en passant is always forced if we believe the anarchy school of chess then i mean if i have mate in one but there's an en passant on the board en passant every time dude no question what do you think chili I think if you're my student and you enter some of a mate, I'll probably discern you as a student. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it's worth it, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're playing an online game and it's haha -ha for the wolves, but in all seriousness, don't give up a mate. Like, if you have a mate in one, take the mate in one. Don't take the ampassant, even though ampassant is forced always. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, ampassant, we'll talk about it later, but it's kind of a meme in the chess community because it's the special move that a lot of beginners don't really know but you'll know because you're a student at the a's for drew and chili mad lad chess academy but yeah a lot of people they'll like see on for the first time they're like wait that's illegal and then they uh they look it up and it's like oh yeah on is the thing so i hope that answers your question hex and if you guys have any other questions we'll answer them throughout the stream if you have questions on youtube be sure to drop them down in the comment section and while you're at it make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe you know all the standard youtube stuff 
and we will see you guys in the next one. Um, so yeah, see you guys later.